Today's video is brought to you by Goldfish because they are the snack that smiles back. I think I might have done this bit before, I don't know. Regardless, they are delicious and probably my favorite snack. Delicious. <laughs> Hello Internet, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To. I hope you all are continuing to stay safe, stay healthy, keeping those hands nice and clean, and maybe wear that mask when you go outside. The CDC says you don't have to if you're vaccinated, but today we are going to be looking at box sets. Once again, I made a box set video a while ago and had tons of fun making it. So. I wanted to do another one. I am a total sucker for box sets. The packaging for them are usually fantastic. There's usually bonus material. There's usually really thick booklets full of information. And overall, just having multiple albums or tons of content in a box is just very appealing to me. So with all that being said, Let's jump into the box sets I have for you today. I'm actually not gonna need my CD stand here today because uh, they're boxes and they're too big to put on. And the first box set I have for you today, I have Wilco's Alpha Mike Foxtrot. This wonderful box set captures rare Wilco tracks recorded between 1994 and 2014. 20 years of music. But being a massive Wilco fan, I could not resist but to buy this. There's stuff on here that spans all the way back to when they were recording AM, and it goes all the way until they were recording A Whole Love. It's just everything I could ask for in a Wilco box set. So without further ado, let's dive in and take a closer look on what's inside. This is a, just a, bit big packaging to fit in the frame here. Maybe I should hold it to the side, but uh, yes, this is Wilco, Alpha Mike Foxtrot. Um, the iconic picture of the uh, towers in Chicago, an old picture looks like. And then in the back here, you can just see every single thing that's on here. Um, my copy is a bit faded, as you can see. I did buy it when it first came out in 2004. 14 or 15. I was in college when I got it, but um, it's a little faded, but overall still in good condition. I like the uh, old recordings in disc one from the, uh, the AM era, um, borderlining uh, right after Uncle Tupelo was breaking up. I don't know how old those recordings are, but um, yeah, they're, they're good stuff there. Diving right in, um, we can see some of Wilco's iconic art. Uh, they were known for some pretty cool art, especially for their concert photos. Yeah, so this is uh, October 10th, 2007 at the uh, North Pop, I think is what that says, North Rop Auditorium in Minneapolis. Inside we have even more of their artwork. And there's the discs. One and two resting snugly in there, and four and five. Four whole discs of content. It's a lot of Wilco. And then the other aspect of this that's really cool is this booklet. This is uh, one of the reasons why I love box sets so much. So this book is just packed with uh, old, old photos of the band. Some very young Jeff Tweedy and uh, older members of the band. These two guys are no longer in the band. This one's not even with us anymore. Um, but uh, Jeff, who's the lead vocalist and guitarist, and John, who is the bassist and the only other original member of the band. And then just a very nice write-up on uh, the band and their history here. And if I remember correctly, yeah, so check this out. This is what I love the most. So not every song, but most of the songs have a unique write-up 
to them, so it gives you a uh, background on what was going on during these recordings. That is, I think, the thing I'm a huge sucker for. It really gives you insight on uh, the mindset of the person writing the song or uh, what was going on in the studio, what was going on with the band. Just all that information I think is just really, really cool to learn about. There's a lot here. I don't think I should go through the whole thing. I'll flip through it very quickly. But um, this is just a wonderful, wonderful thing to include with this box set. So if you are a Wilco fan, I think that this is essential for your collection. box set I have for you today, I have the House of Love's debut album, The House of Love. These guys are an English band that first formed sometime in the mid 80s. They were known for incorporating elements of dream pop, psychedelia, and power pop to create this very, very unique sound. A sound that would be heavily influenced by Slow Dive and Ride and probably tons of other shoegaze bands for that matter. And as I said before, this is their debut album, but this particular edition is a reissue that not only features the original album remastered, but tons and tons and tons of bonus content spanning across five discs. I'm not gonna lie, I actually didn't really know a thing about this band, but I stumbled across this at Amoeba and just loved the cover. And considering the fact that it had five discs worth of music was even more intriguing to me, so I picked it up. I can easily say it was well worth the investment. So uh, let's dive on into this and see what's inside. The House of Love, complete with this sticker here. Classic 1988 debut album, 30th anniversary, five CDs includes previously unreleased materials. Uh, this was put out by uh, Cherry Red Records. They've put out some fantastic reissues. I think they did all the uh, the Slow Dive original album reissues, all of which have a ton of bonus content on them, which is great. I'd love to know if uh, you folks watching like this cover as much as I did. Again, this the cover is pretty much the reason I bought this. I just saw this and there was just something about it that I really, really liked and I had to know what it was. So. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, but um, we have the first disc here. I think this is the original album, I would assume so. Yeah, it says the album on there. Can't really see it from where I'm standing. And then uh, disc two, singles, b-sides, and rarities. Disc three, demos. There's a booklet here, but we'll go back to that in just a sec. Disc four, uh, what does that say? Uh, BBC Sessions from 88 to 89. And uh, disc five, live recordings. So yeah, that's a lot of content. But let's see some of the things inside this book, which again, very, very meaty here. There, I think that, let's, let's take a comparison. So that's the picture, keep that in your mind. And let's see this. It looks like it's from the same photo shoot, but not the same photo itself. Bunch of strapping young lads there. They must be like 20 years old in these photos. They look very young. I think the thing that really appeals to me about these, uh, this cover and uh, really the sound of this album is just how 80s it sounds. There's, there's a certain 80s sound um, that I just love. And I guess you could call it new wave, but um, this kind of straddles the line of having that new wave sound, but also being, um, I don't like using the term, but just for lack of a better term, indie. Um, it's like both melodic and, uh, nice to listen to. Yeah, I don't know. There's, it's just such an appealing sound to me. That's a pretty cool photo right there. All right, again, this, there, there's a lot to this, so I'll just flip through this real quick. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember when I was uh, shopping for this at Amoeba, they had a couple 
versions of this album. They had, I think there was a three disc, three issue uh, that I almost bought. It was a little cheaper, but I opted out for the more expensive five disc version because, well, I'm a sucker for content. So uh, yeah, if you find this, definitely pick it up. It's, uh, it's got a lot of stuff on it. Still walking in me Still talking in me The next box set I have for you today, I have Tangerine Dream The Pink Years albums. Tangerine Dream is a legendary band that was super influential to so many genres of music. Electronica, ambient, new age, space rock, kraut rock, the list goes on. This box set compiles the band's first four releases between the years of 1970 to 1973. And I mostly bought this box set because at the time I didn't really know much about the band. I knew them by name and I knew just how influential they were, but as far as what their album sounded like, I had no idea. So this just seemed like a perfect way to start. First four albums all packaged together in one box. And as I said in the intro about packaging, this particular box set has very, very nice packaging. So uh, let's take a closer look and see the contents inside. You can see here that uh, there are the four albums that this box set features. Uh, crazy to think that they release this much content within three years. Usually it's an album a year or an album every other year for bands, but these guys just pumped out all of this in the span of three years, which is pretty pretty impressive. There's more of the same just along the spines here. Esoteric recordings, shout out to you guys. Uh, here's a breakdown of the track listings here. And then when we open it up, we can see this little crease here that allows you for easy access. Thank you, Esoteric Records. So this uh, fold-out booklet. Uh, there's the original members of the band. I know that... Uh, I don't even know if any of these guys are still in the band. They've had a lineup change over the years. Um, if at least one of them is in the band, then that's pretty cool, but who knows. Very cool photos. Them performing live. I'd imagine uh, the time these guys were around in the beginning, in the 70s, their shows were total trip. And I imagine they weren't as attended as they probably would be now. Um, but I think they'd still be pretty magical. Um, I guess we're a little out of order here, so we'll start from this one. This is the first album, technically, Electronic Meditation. Um, the interesting thing about what this box set does is it packages these albums in these, uh, these very skinny digipacks. Um, you can get these albums uh, in jewel case form if that uh, suits your fancy a little bit more, but again, um, being a fan of box sets and being a fan of having uh, multiple albums in one package, I was a uh, more drawn to that than anything. But uh, the formatting you'll find with all of these are very similar to one another. So like, there's the inside track listing disc, and then we'll go on to the next one. I don't know if this is this the next one. Let's let's see if it is. It is okay. Disc two, Alpha Centauri. Cover right there. You open it up. There's some innards. Um, track listing is a. Uh, where is it? It's right here this time. The disc right there. And uh, number three, Zeit. I've always thought this cover was really, really cool. The solar eclipse, I think, is a very nice uh, uh, photo to represent what the band was going for. Oh, it's upside down. I'm looking at it and I'm wondering why it's uh, looking funny, but yeah, it's because it's upside down. It's really neat. Ah, that's a cool picture. And then finally, number four 
think this is self-titled. Let's check the box on the back and see. No, this is a ATEM, A-T-E-M. Lovely, lovely photography there. Very cool. Yeah, and that's about it as far as uh, the contents inside the box goes. But um, yeah, I don't know. This this packaging is just really nice to me. Um, and it could be because the condition of this box set is still very, very good. It's like new. Um, I didn't get it that long ago, but I've preserved it quite well. I got it brand spanking new, not secondhand, so yeah. Um, Anybody who wants to get into this band, I think this is a great starting point because these are their first four albums. There is another compilation album that has uh, the next, I want to say it's the next th uh, three or four albums after these ones, which contains some of the band's most uh, popular works. Um, that one is featured in one of those like thick double uh, jewel case holders. Um, I guess I wouldn't really qualify that as a box set. Some might, but... Um, it is worth mentioning that uh, if you finish listening to these ones and you want more, then that's the next step is to get that compilation. Um, I have it too. I might talk about it in another video, but uh, yeah, Tangerine Dream is just such a fantastic band. box set I have for you today, I have Matt Elliott's songs. Matt Elliott is an amazing experimental musician who is best known for his drum and bass project, The Third Eye Foundation. During the 90s, The Third Eye Foundation was Matt's primary musical outlet, but later on he decided to put it on hiatus so he could start putting out music under his proper name. And all of that stuff, I gotta tell you guys, is really, really good. Unlike the Electronica stuff he was doing as the Third Eye Foundation, this stuff is much more subdued. He takes on a more folky sound, very much inspired by Eastern European music. But there still are elements of experimentation. Some songs get a little droney, some are a little more ambient, some get very noisy, but overall it's a much different flavor than the Third Eye Foundation. This particular box set collects three of his solo albums along with a bonus disc with seven unreleased songs. And those albums are Drinking Songs, Failing Songs, and Howling Songs, hence the title of this box set being Songs. So let's dive into this box set and see what's inside. The really nice thing about this box set is the artwork. Just look at that. It's so spooky, grotesque even. Just like very, very detailed. You can tell that I got the second hand because there's a, a nice scratch there, but uh, what can you do? All the content's still there and that's really all that matters. But yeah, um, the same can be said about the uh, the album covers themselves. I can get this box open. This is kind of a unique case because uh, the the box is kind of this uh, this slip case here, this very large slip case that houses everything. Um, this looks like it's the uh, yeah. So this is the the failed song. So this is the disc with the, the seven unused, unreleased songs here. And then uh, we have uh, failing songs, songs about failing. More very detailed uh, artwork here. Very, very nice. So we have the disc right here, reflective on both sides. Liner notes right there, and a booklet inside if I can get it out. There we go. Yeah, all that's in here is uh, lyrics, looks like but the, all the liner notes are written 
right here. We move on to uh, Howling Songs. This is the album that I'm most familiar with and again is my favorite of the three or four depending on how you look at it. Um, again the artwork super fucking freaky looking. A giant flea on top of this dude here. Got an eagle with a, a crown on the back. Um, to highlight a specific song I like, the very first track, The Kubler-Ross Model, is a very good song. And uh, I like the title. Seems like it's similar format to the, uh, the other one here. Disc is right here, again, reflective on both sides. Liner notes look like they're right here. Even more very detailed artwork. And a booklet right here. Very, very nice. And finally, Drinking Songs, Matt's most popular album under his uh, his own name here. I see once again, it's uh, very similar to the other ones here. Not as much artwork. Not reflective on this disc here, that's interesting. This, uh, this art looks like, it's kind of like a collage here. Still very cool. I can't show that. Gotta censor that one in post. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, this is Matt's music. Uh, this is a box set I think is well worth owning. And uh, I feel like any collector out there who is seeking it out will uh, need to import it because um, I believe that all of these albums, whether or not they are a part of the box set or not, were only released on a, uh, a French label. Unless you can find a seller who is in the States, if you're in America, uh, then you'll have to import it. But... Um, even if you have to import this box set, I think it's well worth owning because there's some really, really good music on here. The last box set I have for you today I have Beat Happenings crashing through. Beat Happening was an amazing twee pop, jangle pop band from Olympia, Washington. They proved to be huge influences on bands like Built to Spill, Modest Mouse, as well as even hardcore bands in the scene. And this particular box set has every single album they released in their career. It's funny because prior to getting this box set, I actually already owned most of the band's albums on CD. I was missing just one, which for some reason I could not find a CD copy of. But then I came across the box set, which has that one CD I was missing and decided, fuck it, I'm gonna buy it. I'll get rid of my other copies and I'll just have it all in one box. And I'm very glad I did because, well, as I said before, I'm a sucker for box sets. I like this packaging and I like that it's all packaged together. So for one final time, let's dive into this box and see the contents inside. You can also tell that, uh, I got this one secondhand because of this scratch right here. But once again, it's really the uh, the content that I care mostly. Um, and frankly, um, the fact that this box set uh, comes secondhand, it's a little a little beat up, not too beat up. Um, I kind of like that. It's a very punk rock aesthetic here. Um, you can see that. We have all the albums here in this booklet right on top. Um, I love that each album cover is a different color. 
kind of has like a little rainbow thing here. Um, but unlike Matt Elliott's uh, box set, the, uh, the, the slip case, so to say, is uh, a bit more solid here. Um, I guess we'll start from the top. Uh, where is the top? I guess it is this one. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, the very first album, the self-titled album. It is a great record. Um, Our Secret, which is the first track on this album, is really, really good. And I believe this uh, this issue, uh, in comparison to the original vinyl release that came out in the 80s, uh, this issue has some, some bonus content that was not in the original release. Number two, Jamboree. This one, I think, is considered the band's best effort. Um, and I would agree, because uh, there's some really great songs on here. Uh, Indian Summer is the uh, the highlight track. It's the song that uh, quite a lot of other bands have covered over the years, but um, other than that, the rest of the album is great. Um, Bewitched is a great song. In Between, great song. Um, the title track, Jamboree, great song. Overall, I think this is just a fantastic album. And I, I want to say uh, that this is... Uh, an album that's included on Kurt Cobain's uh, 50 of his favorite albums. So uh, you know it's good. Next is uh, Black Candy, following up Jamboree. Um, I would say that this is kind of more of the same. Um, maybe, maybe a little more, uh, I don't want to say produced, but more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? more put together. Uh, the band has always been known for their uh, their primitive approach to music. They uh, would use stuff like garbage cans or like boxes for drums or would uh, borrow instruments from other bands, especially if they were performing live. And um, this album is evident that they're using more real instruments in comparison to their earlier works. Next up is uh, Dreamy, I think is what this one's called. Yes, Dreamy. I have always loved this cover. I don't know. Um, I, I, I have stated in many videos that I am a sucker for covers that have no text. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I like this photo of the band and I like that they included it as a cover. And uh, much like Black Candy, it's a uh, further showing that the band is uh, writing more material that sounds more put together, less primitive. Um, Still, the integrity of the music is very much them. Um, twee pop, dream pop, um, childlike lyrics, playful lyrics. It's still all there, but um, they sound a lot more uh, put together than uh, the early stuff. And then we have uh, You Turn Me On. Now, this album is... Uh, very, very much more produced. Um, they actually used overdubs in this album, which is not something that the band had done in the past. And I'd also like to say it's more dreamy, more psychedelic sounding than the other albums. That opening trap, trap, what am I saying? Opening track, <laughs> I'm looking at the title here. Tiger Trap is uh, a fantastic opening. Um, the, uh, the dual guitars playing kind of that droning notes with Calvin's really low baritone vocals. It just works really, really well. Um, this album, I think for sure, is up there with one of my favorites. Photos here are very similar to the aesthetic of uh, House of Love in a way. <laughs> and then um, the final CD. So this is the this is the CD that I was missing initially. So I had owned uh, jewel case CD copies of all of these albums, but this is the one I did not have. This is Music to Climb the Apple Tree by. And um, this is technically a compilation. Uh, so it features 
a bunch of uh, B-sides, singles, um, and then they actually did an EP split with the band Screaming Trees, which seems so outrageous, if you ask me. Um, Screaming Trees being a, a very popular grunge band and a beat happening, not grunge by any means. They were their own thing, but uh, they did a split and it's just because they're from similar areas and they're all on this uh, this collection, which was really exciting to see. I don't think the, uh, the split ever got released on CD. It might have only been uh, a vinyl exclusive. So uh, the fact that it is on CD and it is on this compilation is really exciting. And uh, the track Angel Gone, which is the first track on here, also very, very good. This was a bonus CD I actually was not expecting to get when I got this box set in the mail. Um, I think, I could be wrong, but I think this is just a couple of uh, live recordings. Um, I'm not exactly sure where they were recorded. I would have to look that up online. The, the packaging is not uh, saying anything, but the fact that it was included and I wasn't expecting it was actually pretty cool. I, uh, I love me some bonus content with my, uh, with my box sets, so that was exciting. And then finally, um, the main thing in this box set is this really thick booklet. Uh, considering that I spent so much time looking over the CDs individually, I won't go too in depth with this booklet, but um, it looks like it's just uh, an overall history of the band along with uh, pictures of them and uh, some background on the songs, probably. Uh, Olympia as a whole and the music scene there because um, the music scene in Lim Olympia was uh, very unique a lot of uh, a lot of great bands came out of there not just beat happening but like Bratmobile and a lot of other riot girl bands were Bikini Kill I think was one of them too yeah so um Really, if you are a Beat Happening fan, um, this, this is definitely essential to get. Um, I know that on vinyl, they have released a box set called We Are Beat Happening. So if uh, vinyl is more your jam, then uh, that might be a better thing to pick up. But if you are a CD fan such as myself, then this box set is... Uh, the way to go and as you can see I'm having a hard time putting these all away oh my goodness come on get in there there we go and we'll tuck that bonus CD in there and last and yeah beat happening check them out they're fantastic welcome back for Indian summer We'll come back for Indian summer. We'll come back for Indian summer. All right, Internet, that does it for me. If you have any box sets you've just added to your collection or any really cool box sets that you've owned for a while, let me know what they are. Leave a comment down below. And if you also like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show me the support and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post a new album on there semi-frequently, talk a little bit about it, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So thank you all so very much for watching. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye. Jackie wore a dress Jimmy always was a mess Jackie was my friend